When Studio 397 updated the railroad system, they added dynamic track temperatures with it. Some parts of the track are hotter, some colder, depending on a lot of different factors. Now at Le Mans Virtual, they also talked about how that this meant that during the night when things got colder, they used a different tire compound. Now I'm someone with lots of years of experience in the LMP2 Orica in our Factor 2 endurance races. After a season on this new railroad system, I tested different compounds when tracks got hotter and colder. But we always ended up using the same compound of tires. This made me want to go deeper into this and get factual data about this and find out whether if the track temperature actually matters or not. The way I went about testing this is quite simple. Set a static grip level, static time of day, take the Oricon track and do 20 laps in a row. First at 0 degrees Celsius air temperature, then 20 and then 40. Do this with all three compounds of tires and I can compare all the MoTeC data and see how the tire reacts to all the temperature changes. This was all done with the Orica 07 LMP2 car at the Daytona road course. This is because we had a 24 hour race here in the Virtual Endurance Championship and this was also the moment I had the most time to do all this driving. Although it means that the tires are less affected by everything, as there are lots of full speed parts, it also means that everything is much more consistent. Later I do want to do this test with different cars and different tracks. If you would like to see that, please let me know in the comments. The first question is does the track temperature affect tire temperatures? The answer is easy to get on this one. Just take the test run of the three different track temperatures and compare the temperatures and pressures of the tires. I will explain this graph a bit. The tires are recorded with an inner, center and an outer temperature. This graph shows the average surface temperature. Let's focus on one value at the moment. The inner value or for the front left I will choose for this, as this is the most used part of the tire. From left to right, every three bars is a tire compound. First soft, then medium, then hard. Those three bars again, from left to right, are 0 degrees Celsius air temperature, 20 degrees and then 40. As you can see, there is a significant difference on all the graphs between the different compounds, which implies that the track temperature does affect tire temperatures. Although this already pretty much confirms that it uh, affects the tire temperatures, I will show you the core temperatures as well. This is done a bit differently though, as core temps are not recorded. You can trace this back to tire pressures though, which are shown here. This is just from the front left tire, with the softs at different temperatures. Again, there is a significant difference, so I think we can safely conclude that it does affect tire temperatures. This brings me to the second question. What does this mean for tire wear? This graph shows you both the total and average wear of the front left tire. Higher temperatures do seem to account for higher wear. Harder compounds also wear less than softer. This both makes sense. Noteworthy thing here is though, that soft tire at 0 and 20 degrees are exactly the same, or at least with a margin of errors, which also goes for the medium 20 and 40 degrees wear. I do wonder though if this extra wear you get from the heat is worth thinking of the strategy about. For this we first need to set a percentage of wear at which you deem the tires not usable anymore. For these tires it's between 25 and 45 percent depending on the compound and how you drove them. Let's just say it's 30 percent. Since in endurance racing you usually do multiple stints on the same sets of tires, does this mean you will have to change the tires earlier. Let's first take the hard tires. Those were the most consistent and you can do the longest with them in theory. Let's first calculate how many laps you can do with these tires at 0 degrees Celsius. With an average of 0.784% wear per lap, this means that you can do 89 laps with this set of tires. Since the stints were 25 laps long in Virtual Endurance Championship, this means that you could do 3 stints on the tires. Do the same with the hearts at 40 degrees Celsius air temperature, which has 0.9249% wear per lap, and you can get 75 laps in, 
which is also exactly 3 stins. This is very close though, and it does show that even though it doesn't matter here, it definitely can matter for how many stins you can do. If one compound of the, uh, the temperature will mean one less stint, but the other one will mean the same amount of stints for that compound, it might be worth changing up the tire compound due to the tire wear. Doing the same for the soft tires, this only meant difference of 5 laps though, and for mediums the same goes. This means that on this Orica car specifically, the hard tires are the most sensitive to temperature changes. Although I'm not an expert how that real uh, tires work, this does seem a little bit weird to me. This brings me to question 3. What are the lap time differences? Looking at the lap time graph, you are not really seeing a clear difference between tires. This is due to the nature of the track. There are, are a lot of straights and very few turns. This means that lap times are generally very close. So at this track specifically, it doesn't seem like it matters which compound you use, the lap times will be within about half a second of each other. What is noteworthy though about this graph is that there are no, no outliers. At really cold temperatures, the hard tires still seem to work just as well as soft tires. And at hot temperatures, softs work just as well as hard tires. This does seem wrong to me. As when it's as hot as 48 degree uh, track temperatures, you would expect the soft tires to blister and completely destroy themselves after a short well. This doesn't happen though. Just like how hard tires shoot grain at very low temperatures. Although for that one, I need to make it cloudy as well and uh, to get the track temperature a bit closer to 0 degrees Celsius. I haven't done that for this combo. But I did try this on Spa last race, and it indeed didn't matter. Okay, so what is my conclusion about all this? We know R Factor 2 is well known for that lower uh, the tire temperatures are, the quicker you are, no matter how cold you go. For this car, it seems like that is the case as well. I have heard though that the BTCC cars are much more sensitive to this, and I will have to test that out for a different video. But for this car, this does mean that the track temperatures do not seem to affect the gameplay all that much. There's no tire compound that doesn't work at certain temperatures, and since wear is only affected that much, it's even very unlikely that it will ever affect your strategy. Maybe at a track where the wear is higher, but even then, going from day to night, it will not affect your tire compound. This does seem a little bit disappointing to me, and this is quite an important thing in racing in general. All I can hope for is that, the, the, the diff, that this is different for the BTCC cars, which would mean that this is fixable for the Orica as well. But this is for another video. So this was it for this video. If you uh, think I should go deeper into this, uh, or if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, please tell me in the comments, and I hope I see you next video.